But never I say my pen dream TV. Pen dream TV there. I see them. Yopo. Me mo akwa ba e de ba pen dream TV me so se ne di de di kia o share na be subscribe to channel no no akleke bell so se de di news to also subscribe to me akan in term no wetie. E ye NDC communicator friend Professor Benedicta. Yajira Fusu Mensa and Edin Sembia Betu Jafa, Dr. Baumia. Obisa se na Dr. Baumia de lecture no away Dr. Baumia na organize a man for Google UPS UPS auditorium no a lecture omu on the economy ne ne Baumia away a on lecture biwe. Esan se mra abayin ebe pa okunya na Baumia e sorry a okasafa taxation okasafa production on se omayi omu ba omu be produce omu taxi biwe ne ne diye ni ye uwi a face wa kikani ya mabe bria ba omia e kaya ene wa feli as head of economic management team eni ya bayi ni ya mabe bria bwa shwa omu shwa e gana fwa omu ayin tu miyen di su nina ana mi mpesa me kasa be bria kwa ya ee doktor ee professor benedicta ya ira fosu ee question ee doktor ba omia esa anse vice president for imani ya kwa kase ee doktor ba omia ee nye in charge of Ghana, a son so nyanye president, a vice president keke. And when a coffee son same way in a by a professor Benedict Tayro for so a keka in some about me and Cassagina simply so a keka and they went to me and ya obi sas about me. I didn't know my lecture bills. Say no one in charge, and then I know a call around a late. Young Kohe video. Never again will Ghanaians make such a mistake of voting for MPP to power. In December 7th, never again. I mean, Ghanaians are very discerning people. We haven't forgotten what we have gone through and we continue to go through the haircuts, the inflation, and to talk about even the lecture of His Excellency Mahmoud. I just asked myself, why do we even have to spend time discussing his lecture? He was good at giving lectures during. Uh, the time when he was in opposition. I think he should spare us the time. He should spare us and rather fix the economy. He should spare us the lecture. We are not interested in lectures that does not transform our life or transform the economy. I mean, uh, running government or governance is not theoretical um, figures or theoretical thoughts that we have in books where the economists will tell you that when all things are equal, if you do this, this happens. All things in reality cannot be constant. All things cannot be whole constant because things keep changing. Mm -hmm. We've heard His Excellency um, Mahmoud Baumia from the opposition said that continuous taxation or introduction of new taxes or increment in new taxes hurts businesses. They hurt the economy. They make people poor. What have we seen during his regime? They've introduced over 40 new taxes. Again, during his um, lectures, I remember 2016, he talked about the fact that when they come, he's going to make sure that he arrests the, 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 the city from falling and make sure that he gives the key to the IGP for him to throw into the sea. Today, at the time he was talking, a city to a dollar was three cities, 80 pesos. Some places you have four cities to a dollar. Today, as we are talking, the dollar to a city is 12.5. In fact, it went as high as 70 cities. Remember, you know, before it came down, you know, what happened? That now that he's, he's, he's the lead of the economic management team, he's not able to solve some of these things. The time he had a lot of lectures going about throwing figures out there, you know, talking about inflation. Inflation around that time was 15.4. We had inflation going up as high as 51%. And today we are presenting such a, uh, I mean, candidate for presidency. What is uh, Kofi Bento telling us? I mean, sometimes they should, they, should, they should show some respect to Ghanaians and know that we are right-thinking people. We are people who are able to make choices between wrong and right. Not too long ago, we've seen people who made investment lost everything that they have invested for. As we are talking today, Utah, I mean, uh, Tewu is on strike, Fusak is on strike, yeah, this is, uh, this is trade union are 
Organized labor. Organized labor, you know, are threatening to organize massive demonstrations because you can see that the economy is totally in shambles. And this is the man that is in charge of the economy. You remember, Palmia said that we do not need to go and borrow mm -hmm. to construct mm -hmm. our roads. <laughs> All we need to do is to tow, is to tow various sections of the road, and that will be enough to build road. Today, we have witnessed a regime that has borrowed the most amount of money, and we are running into 700 billion Ghana cities just within these few uh, years of uh, this regime. So what happened to the lecture he gave? But, but he told describe... us that in 18 months, or be in government, he will make sure that no household in Ghana will lack toilet or water. As we are talking today, go to Accra, go to Nima, go to uh, uh, various areas within Accra <coughs> and see, go to our beaches. The entire place is, is littered with uh, fecal matter because people do not have toilet. Water, we have a lot of people drinking untreated water. You go to rural areas, people are drinking water from the same source as animals. So when you have this person, you know, coming to tell us that, look, vote for me and I will turn things around. What is he talking about? He is in charge now. And we are seeing the worst economic situation ever in the history of Ghana. Our salary... Workers' salary have virtually devaluated by 50%. Businesses are collapsing. Look, this regime, under his watch, they used over 20 billion Ghana cities to collapse banks that needed just 9 billion to survive. And you think these are rational people that Ghanaians should vote for? Look, before the 2016 election, <clears throat> Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamakro made a very profound statement, and I always mention it. He said Ghanaians would learn a bitter lesson should they vote for His Excellency Nana Akufu Ado. And I think Ghanaians have really learned a bigger lesson. Never in the history of Ghana have depositors' money be denied them. You have put your own money in an investment, and they tell you that, look, forget it. You cannot get your money. Never in the history of this country, people who have worked for their hard-earned money have lost their investment. They always run around with this issue of free SHS and that they have done well in that every student is going to school for free and so we should clap for them. When we talk about free SHS, which aspect of the SHS is free? I mean, the, the free they are talking about, which of them is free? Is it the textbooks? Is it, is it the prospectors? In fact, it takes a parent not less than 6,000 Ghana cities for the, child, for the parent to prepare his or her ward to go to school. Is that free? Textbooks haven't come. Freedom haven't come yet. So what are, what are they talking about free SHS? What are they talking about? Look, they should spare us this issue of free SHS. That every platform they want to say that, oh, they have done so well by implementing free SHS. Free SHS was already in existence before they came to. But because His Excellency John Dramani Mahama is a visionary leader, a leader who would want to do things orderly and not just jump and do things haphazardly. <laughs> Started by having free day schools. People who were in this uh, free free um, community day school went to school for free. They had textbooks. Things were much better under this regime. They have terrorized. They have terrorized teachers and headmasters from speaking, and so they. Paint a picture that it is good, it is free, and people should buy into it. But parents and teachers and headmasters who are in the realm of affairs can feel that what they are saying free, it's never free. And parents can attest to it. Thank God now, they themselves are not buying into it that parents have to come on board. And they are saying that they are allowing parents to contribute to, you know, support schools. If it is free, why are parents uh, uh, supporting? Why should parents support to feed students that 
our government are saying or our government is saying that it is free so they should spare us this free issue you know free yeah. SHS anytime <clears throat> they get a platform to talk but his excellency Baumia to talk about it look as a leader credibility is very important you lose it all if you are you know living your life flip and flop he told us that when the fundamentals are wrong or are weak the exchange rate will expose you now he comes back to say that when the i mean when the exchange rates are high that doesn't mean that the fundamentals are weak what is he talking about where is the hostel his excellency john i mean his excellency mahmoud Baumia promised the kayas where are the hostels he said that they will not borrow we have witnessed them borrowing as much and our debt going as much as 700 billion this same person is telling us today that we should vote for him we should give him a uh, kofi bento said that we should give him a chance give him a chance to come and now finish us a camp i mean a regime that has virtually collateralized every source of income get fund had been collateralized we've seen when they came esla there was a lot of money they use it as mortgage to take loans. Look at uh, Sano Hydro. They say when they get Sano Hydro, we have all our roads to, I mean, tie. Just go, I mean, a strategic road like Accra Kumasi Highway. Go there and see the kind of road that we have. Use the Eastern Corridor Road to Hokwe. And see the kind of road that we have. <clears throat> and this is a man who has been in charge of the economic management team. Today, he is telling us that we should give him a chance. But Ghanaians, we are rational beings. We are able to make choices and good choices. I think 2016, people just want to see what they can deliver. Because they are full of rhetoric. One district, one a factory, okay. one village, one dam, one banku, one tilapia. <laughs> Today, <laughs> where are the food and the jobs they promised us? At the time when they said there will be jobs and jobs and jobs, we were at 8.4% unemployment. Today, we are talking about 14% unemployment. And this same person is telling us that we should give him a chance. Look, Ghanaians. And if you're youth out there, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama is saying that 24-hour economy is the game changer come 20, 24 December 7th. Because that is a policy that is going to bring three streams of employment. Before I go to Catherine, let me just ask you this question. The issue of unemployment. I mean, if you, if you watch international channels a lot, you can tell the statistics of unemployment and the challenges that are hitting almost every other country, whether being Africa, Europe, Asia, and all. So everybody is struggling, you know, at some point. So Ghana is not an exception. Is it something very different or unique about our challenge that we're going through? Every country and its own challenges and how you manage it. That is why we have leaders. Leaders are supposed to sit down to come up with policies and formulate policies that will help to curtail some of the challenges we have. At a time when our government is telling us that we should tighten our belt, that is a time they have loosened years. Mm -hmm. At a time when we could see you know, the economy be in crisis and people suggesting to the government cut down on expenditure, what have we seen? They threw that to the dogs. They simply refused. For them, this is their time. They have taken over. It's their GMI, as Osla would say. Their GMI. And so whatever we say, they will not listen. Baumia, His Excellency, Dr. Baumia, said that it is not right to tax Momo. What have we seen? They introduced the E-Levy. They taxed Momo. If your parent is sick at a village and you are struggling here in Accra and you decide to send money, 200. Taxing 1%.
If you decide you are on MTN and Vodafone, both having Momo, if you transfer money from your MTN Momo account to your Vodafone, you are taxed. What sense does it make? Double mm. taxation. Mm. So honestly, I want to say that we cannot lump our problem together with global crisis. Every country and its own challenge and how leaders are able to maneuver this challenge to get their country out of it. And that mm. is what we expect us mm. to do. So, 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 so 